investigators and metaphysicists say there are ghosts everywhere, and even if we don't see them. That may be true, and if so, it seems some people just have the ability to stir up the dead. Iona Kempa Jow and her family may be one of those with the unenviable ability to awaken the dead, because it seems no matter where they move, the ghosts come out to play. It all started in 1980 when Iona and her family moved into a gray wood slated side home at the corner of 4th in Kansas. It took a few years before activity kicked up, but when it did, it wasn't subtle. The first thing that happened was one night I put the girls to bed and turned off their light. And before I got to the door, the light switch was flipped back on. The switch was off and it flicked back on. Activity in the house ran the gamut and ebbed and flowed seemingly at its own discretion. Months would go by with nary a peep from the ghost or ghost and then suddenly a light would turn on by itself. The oven might be found turned on even though no one was had been home all day and at night the TV would come on. When the family moved away from the home, the TV went with them, and it never came on again under its own violation. Iona's daughter, Tabitha, remembers the ghostly goings on in the home. Particularly, one night, after returning in the wee hours of the morning from a party, she tiptoed her way into the home and went to the bathroom to use the toilet. The night's baby of beverages was doing its job, and she dozed off sitting upright on the commode. Suddenly, someone touched me on the shoulder. Tabitha said, I was the only one in the bathroom, and the only one awake. If the toilet wasn't full before, it probably was after the ghostly spirit startled her awake. Around the mid-1990s, Iona met Charlie Kemp and he joined the family of the home. He never experienced any paranormal activity in his home, but his presence seemed to have agitated the spirit of spirits. It got real active there for a while, Iona said. One night we were in bed and someone sat down on the end of the bed. You could feel the bed sink in and she fitted the sheet popped loose from the corner. One day, Iona ran into her, their, her then grown daughter, Mariah, at the grocery store. She asked what antics the spirits had been up to lately. I said, Harry hasn't done much at all. I don't know where I came up with the name Harry. Just who Harry might have been is unclear, but the family moved away from the home and it seems Harry stayed put. But for Tabitha, who now had daughters of her own, the next home she moved into was even more active. The home, a brick house a few miles northwest of Jowl at the corner of Sid Richardson Road and Willis Road was a nexus of paranormal goings on. The author used to visit the home in the late 1980s when another family lived there and even then, ghostly happenings were going on. One day, the owner of the home was walking across the yard when suddenly an invisible hand grabbed him on the shoulder, yanking him backwards, and a voice in his ear said, Stop. Looking around stunned, the man happened to glance down at his feet before going about his business only to find a large rattlesnake coiled up directly where his next step would have carried him. Historically, it is known at least one man died in the intersection of those two roads years ago when his vehicle was struck by a semi on a foggy morning. Could this be the ghost? According to Tabitha, there may have been a man there, but she witnessed the spirit of a little girl. The day we moved into that house in the master bedroom, there was a place for the sink and cabinet and I was sitting there 
And there's a little girl standing there in the old timey Laura Ingalls Little House on the Prairie clothes. She said, hearing voices and conversations between unseen speakers when alone in the home was a common experience of Tabitha and her children. We always heard a lot of talking out there, she said. One night, I had gotten up to go to the kitchen to get something to drink, and suddenly I hear my name, and I see a white figure disappear out of the corner of my eye, said Natalia Willis. Another night, there was a constant knocking on my bedroom door. I opened the door, but no one was there, and when I closed it, the knocking started again. Alone in the home on the night, Andrea Willis was in her room when a noise went from the living room drew her to check if the rest of the family had returned. I walked into the living room and there were three figures sitting in the living room talking. One looks up at me and they all stop talking and disappear. One looked like an elderly figure, an older man in those older style clothes. The other two, I couldn't make out, she says. Andrea said her dog at the time refused to stay in her room many nights and often woke her at midnight growling at the door to the closet. One night, she tried sleeping in the living room to avoid the uneasy feeling of being watched in her room. She fell asleep with the TV on and woke to the sound of it turning off. There was a little girl standing in front of me, she said. She looked like the same little girl that mom saw in those old timey clothes. Just a few miles south of the home, there stands a sandstone marker over the graves of three small children who died of scarlet fever nearly a century ago. Could the little girl seen in the home be one of their restless spirits? If so, it seems the child's spirit wanders far and wide across the rocky plains as the ghost of a small girl in a white dress has been reported by students roaming in the halls of Jow High School. She's been in homes throughout Jow, and some even tell stories of spotting her walking down the desolate roads late at night.